Welcome. Welcome to Satsang. Now feel the vibrations as you listen to the following words. And turn all the words you hear into their feeling equivalent in the body-mind, which we'll be exploring. Allow yourself to feel. So be it. Um, I, the last few emails that I received, people were asking me about, well, Bert, you talked about the I am, and it really touched us, and they were very beautiful, most of them that I received. But the one common theme was, how do we use the I am for everyday life, practical daily life? So I thought that that was great. You know, I've had about six or seven requesting it, but I'm sure it was more than that people have asked. So then I went into my silence and it was a beautiful day. There's a beautiful bench out there when I go and meditate and I sat and it just came to me and it kept on becoming stronger and stronger. Well, okay, so today we're going to discover a, a secret, uh, how to actually apply the I am uh, in, in daily life so that it, it begins to take over. Okay, in order to do that, there are two things that have to be fully understood. One is yeah, feeling with the body and to learn how to feel with the body. And uh, that is something that is becoming more popular now than it used to be because people are beginning to understand what the body really is. And The Course in Miracles says that the body is neutral and that's, that's its power because it reflects the mind. But we'll go into that for a moment. Okay, um, and the second one is to know the difference between wanting and having. The subtle difference between the two is what makes the difference in living the I am. And that's where this, the secret will be found. Now, let's go into understanding the body, uh, feeling with the body, first one. Um, one time I was talking in satsang and... Um, and I said to the people, it just, just came out, and I said, you know, I've been doing hypnotherapy for over 30 years, and the moment a person comes to see me, and I was referring to people who come to see me physically, but I said, I know what they're thinking all the time. I know exactly what, what is in their mind. It's, it's very clear. And uh, some looked at me as if I'm a psychic or a mind reader or whatever. So just to make sure, I said, no. Not only everybody can do it, but I said it's the simplest thing there is. It is so simple. And so then I explained, okay, to read the mind is very, very simple, but that means you have to be totally open to the person in front of you. And the moment you look at the body, they will tell you exactly how they think, how they behave, how they feel about themselves. You see, um, for example, what is the one outstanding thing in every person in order to know what their mind is like? It's called self-image. Everybody has a self-image. Now, how would you know what the self-image is? You go by the primary motivators of that self-image. Are they shy or are they confident? Are they inward or either outward, extrovert or introvert? Are they open? Or are they closed? Are they resisting, controlling? Or are they innocent and like a child? Okay? So these are the, the, the outstanding qualities from which the whole foundation of the self-image is made. And when that becomes very, very clear, you read a person's mind. The moment a person, you just look at them immediately, you know. You know exactly the image that they're carrying. Okay? And of course the image changes, but then their temperament changes, the way they look, the way they talk, the way they move around changes also, the personality and the energy. Okay, <clears throat> now the power of the body and feeling the body is the primary thing, the first thing we have to understand about the I am. 
And uh, the strange thing is because the body itself is not real. The body is a reflection of consciousness. Okay? And today we're going to see that how it works in the human being, which is a form of mirroring. And once we understand the mirroring, then things become very, very clear. Um, let me tell you the power of the body and the mind. Uh, <clears throat> there, there is a man that has influenced my life very much, apart from Ramana Maharshi, and he was as great as Ramana Maharshi, but I, I never mentioned him that much. His name is Lester Levinson. And Lester Levinson was a man at 42 years of age, suffered a massive heart attack, and the doctor told him that you've only got three weeks to live. I just want to make it fast because uh, it's not important to go into the details. Anyway, this man could not move. He told him that if he bends over to do his shoelaces, he might have a massive heart attack again, and this time it would be fatal. So this man had to just sit and be. And then he asked himself, what is life about? Blah, 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 blah. And finally, he discovered it. Uh, <clears throat> he discovered it to be love, the, the oneness. Okay, but we don't need to go into the, the, all the details of that. Now, what happens is that he actually became a master. And many people revered him as, as they revered Ramana Maharshi, um, all the great ones, Jesus, Buddha. He, he, was, he was really great. And uh, he's still being celebrated. Now, in, in the meantime, he met a man. His name is um, Larry, uh, Larry Crane. <laughs> yeah, I didn't forget. Okay. Larry Crane. He's still alive. And he's in his late 60s, maybe 70s. I'm not sure. And uh, I'm going by the way he looks. He's probably older than he actually looks. And this man was a hypochondriac. And uh, hypochondriac means, you know, if, if they read, they read uh, a magazine, an article in the Reader's Digest, do you have these symptoms? You begin to think you've got all these symptoms, right? <laughs> hypochondriac is always thinking. He used to get a cold very often, and he gets fevers and everything else. But one day, he was talking to his master, because uh, this one became his master. And he said, Larry, he said to his master, he said, well, why do people get sick? He says, people only get sick from the mind. He says, well, what about germs, Larry said, because I, catch, I, I can go on a phone. If somebody just sneezed, I'll catch a cold. He says, there are no such thing as germs. Exactly what Bhagavan said, exactly what all the great masters say. So it defies all the medical discoveries that have been made. But this man, Larry, who is still alive and he's on the internet, he's quite well known now. He's a multi-multi-millionaire. Um, he not only listened to his master when he said there are no germs, but he got it in his body. Now what you get in your body, feel your body, becomes you. Okay? And he never suffered a cold. Forty years after, which is he's still alive now, and he's extremely healthy. He's never seen a doctor. He's never been in a hospital. He's never seen an injection or took any drugs, or not even a, a cold. He said that's the power, and he teaches the power, and so he's made quite a fortune out of that. Well, he still was making it. But again, I'd like the reason I mentioned this is because I wanted to talk to you about mind and body and how the feeling in the body is the major thing. <clears throat> now, did you know that the, the mind, the, the brain, actually the mind as we know, the individualized mind, processes 40 bits of information per second? The body, and listen to this, the body, processes 4 million bits of information per second. Why? Because the body is neutral. And the Course says that. So this means it's a reflection of every thought that goes through your mind. So the body is constantly reflecting what you believe, moment to moment. 
And the body made up of trillions and trillions of cells reflects those thoughts so clearly. You see? So this is we're beginning to see the power of the I am here. Because if this is true, which of course is true, okay, all highly realized masters know this, um, then we know also that the I am, which is the, the primal power, is there is nothing that we cannot have or be or do. So, <clears throat> and, uh, but we have to know how to live from the I am, which we'll be discussing in a, in a moment. So, so now, um, this, this is what, ha what is happening, is that whenever you have a thought in your mind, but you see it as a thought, just like a cloud hides the sun, but then it passes away and the sun goes out again, you don't pay attention and it can't affect you. But if a thought comes and says there is no sun, there is no light in you, in other words, and you see it as negative and you believe it, that very moment you believe that thought immediately takes over your body. All the trillions and trillions of cells of your body. And it affects the areas of the body that are most conducive to that type of energy. Call it vibration, frequency, chakras, or whatever you want to call it, okay? So, so when you suffer a weak part in the body, whether it's the kidneys or liver or heart or whatever, it's all according to how, how you think and how you are built from, from your mind structure. So the body itself is a reflection of the mind. If we can change our feeling nature by actually seeing that feelings are not real, and there's another thing, this is how we're going to use the I am. Feelings are not real. The I am is real because it is love. It is the fullness of power. So if, um, if um, let's say you get up in the morning in a bad mood, okay? This can happen to anyone, realized or not. Because if you get up in the morning and the, the structure of the heavens is in such a way that your horoscope suggests low energy, you cannot help it. But the point is, do you have to suffer from those negatives? From those negatives? No, because you're not a victim. Because feelings are not real. But the, the thing is that the body believes it so much when it feels that, because you see, the, the, the feelings are, are in the body. They're not in the mind. The mind is thought, okay? Produces thought. The moment we believe that thought, it translates into a feeling. So if it's a negative thought, immediately we feel the anxiety and the tension of that in the cells of the body and how it affects the body. Okay, so therefore, if you are able, now you're beginning to, to get into the secret here, okay? This is very powerful, and this is why immediately, as soon as I said, you know, welcome to satsang, immediately the, the voice in me said, no, make sure that you're going to get the feeling, not the words, okay? To get the feeling. How you feel moment to moment is what determines you, how you feel about yourself. <clears throat> but it's all in your mind. You are in total command of it. You see, you're not a victim of anything that's going on. So therefore, if you get up in the morning feeling out of sorts, and then you say, yeah, can I let go of this feeling? You ask your heart, and your heart will say yes, because I would rather feel happy than miserable. That's the heart talking, because that is your true nature. And then you say, but are you sure? This is part of the secret we're learning how to change a feeling. Are you sure you want to change this feeling into a positive? You don't want to keep hanging, hanging on. You say, no, I'm sure. When? Now. Okay? Well, the moment you start going through this process, you are actually changing the feeling in your body by the very fact that you acknowledged it, you faced it, and you're willing to change it, even though in psychology, part of you still wants to hang on, you know. But the change is happening slowly. But let's go into uh, what is happening here, the dynamics. You see, you are a human being. We have heard this many, many times before. And uh, 
The human is wanting. The being is having. Now the two are totally opposites. Why? Because we are a mirror. When you look in the mirror, which is more real? You or the picture in the mirror? Tell me. You. you. Okay, but that's not what we believe. We go into the mirror to see how we look. And the mirror is lying all the time. That's where we make the mistake about the human and the being. How is it lying? Well, first of all, when you look into the mirror, you see the opposite. Right now I'm raising my right arm, but when I look, it's my left arm that I see. Are you with me so far? The mirror image is the opposite. Another, another fact of the mirroring is that if an anorexic woman who is so skinny that she looks as if she's going to drop because she's so skeletal, you know, she looks in the mirror, you know what she believes? Oh, I need to lose more weight. I need to stop eating. Got it? Is she seeing the truth in the mirror? Of course not. Many beautiful people, because they've been hurt badly, they look in the mirror and they don't see themselves as beautiful. And there are others who are mainly, maybe homely, but they start to love themselves and all of a sudden they see a light. You see? So what the mirror reflects is not the truth. The truth is how you feel about yourself. Okay? That is the major thing. How you feel. And then how you feel will become beautiful on the outside because there's a glow, there's a... There's a, there's a sparkle, there's a radiance that, that comes alive because of, of the confidence that you have in yourself and you love who you are. But loving who you are is not an ego thing. It is knowing that you are spirit. You see, you are this incredible energy. Now, the four aspects of the human are these. Okay? We all want approval which in terms we call it love, but in the beginning we just wanted approval because we want it personally. I want you to like me, I want you to prefer me, I want you to think highly of me, I want you to respect me, I'd like you to uh, approve of the things I do, um, you know, blah, 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 or, or go on and on and on and on. Another one is, that we want also is separation. We want separation very, very strongly. The human needs separation. Because separation means it's all personal. You know, I'm talking about me here, I'm not talking about you. Okay, and if I am hurt, I am hurt, not you. You see, so therefore, so therefore the things are happening to me. Okay, we do not see the whole context of it. We do not see the big picture. Nothing is happening to you, nothing is happening out there or in you. What is happening is all what you believe is happening and the body is translating it into a feeling. Okay, so this is very important. So by keeping things uh, separate, separate, okay, I keep uh, reinforcing the idea that I am a singular individual with a mind of my own, making my own life, making my own way, and blah, blah, blah. I am self-made, I am very important, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but we're going to see that these things totally change the more you realize your true nature. And then there is security. We want security very badly. We want it in our relationships. We want it in financially. We want it in, in all ways of life. We want security. This is the human need, security. And then the other one is um, Approval, security, control. Um, just, what is the negative one? <laughs> there are four. Security. Approval, which is love. Control. And you said separation. And separation. Oh, that's it. That's it. That, those are the four. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. What they all have in common is that they all make us feel that very wanting for these four, 
what they all have in common is self-rejection. Okay? Because you want to take it personally. Oh, you've hurt my feelings. You've done this to me. You, you, know, you separate. You, you, that, that very separation is you know, a form of self-rejection. Okay? Seeking approval. Because you don't feel good about yourself unless you're approved. And so on and on and on. You want security. Because without security you feel like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm going to be a, a bag man, a bag lady. I'm going to end up in the street if, if I don't make it, if I don't get enough money or whatever. Because we, we don't, you see, abundance is in the being. It is not in the humans. The human translates it as a want. So are we beginning to see here that the being is the truth? But when it looks in the mirror, it sees the human. But the human is the opposite of the being. So therefore, whatever the being is, the human feels it as a want. Are you with me so far? Okay. Outwardly. So, outwardly, it wants mm -hmm. it. Right. Okay. Now, so therefore when you say I want something because without it I, I feel incomplete, you are actually saying that I don't have it. You see? So the moment you so the moment you say I want security, you'll end up living your whole life never knowing security. As long as you want security, you can never ever have it. It's not possible. And the more you want it, the less security you will have. Okay? Why? Because the human and the being are mirrors. So the human wants what the being has. But it doesn't realize it is seeing in an opposite way. <laughs> okay? Right is left and left is right type of thing. It's seeing opposite. So therefore it wants everything that the being is. But it doesn't realize that it already has it. It thinks, oh, I have security if I have a million dollars. You see? The beautiful thing about Larry, and I'm mentioning it because he's well known and he's probably going to, to listen to this video about him too. Okay, Larry um, praying, is that after he was with his master, not only he achieved all four, re real security, real love, real everything else, but he became a multi-multi-millionaire. He still is. Okay, so and um, many people think that money is the source of all evil and money is bad and blah blah blah, not realizing that money is it's the energy that actually follows through abundance. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean the amount of money. You don't have to be a millionaire to feel abundant. You could even have a couple of dollars, hundred dollars. If you, if you feel abundant, you'll always be taken care of. The moment there is a need, it's fulfilled. Okay? Why? Because that's how the being works. So therefore, when you in your, in your human need keep wanting, every time you want, you are actually destroying your chances of having that because you already have it, but you block it from being seen, just like putting clouds in front of the sun. You see? So we have everything. All these four that we mentioned, but instead of separation, it is oneness. And that is what makes a difference in all fours. You see? Because as long as we want to feel separate, I am individual, I am important, I am better than you, you actually are killing your chances of finding total ab 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 abundance and fulfillment. <laughs> because, again, you are going against this one law. And this one law is being. See, another thing about being is that being has no appearance. Being is not local. Being is not here or there. But it is here and there. <laughs> it is nowhere because it is everywhere. Okay? So that's being. Being is who you are. And when you begin to understand that you're not just a drop of the ocean, drop of the water, although you appear as one and, you, and it's okay, but you're also the ocean. You see? So therefore, that very knowing itself is what brings the other, the other three. So if you were to say to yourself, um, a thought came and, and I find myself seeking security all the time, you know, I'm 
I'm seeking a relationship. I want, I want this and I want that and, and I want more money. And, and the moment you start doing that, you begin to feel negative. But the negativity is not because you don't have these things, but because you don't think you have what you want. Okay, so you're creating a sense of limitation. That sense of limitation blocks the very having of it. The amazing thing about abundance, and, and right now we are moving, we are in the fourth dimension actually, most of the energy is moving into the fourth, is that many people now are beginning to realize their abundance. And, uh, and it has nothing to do with, with uh, working for somebody or working for yourself. Actually, it's... it's doing your own thing. Um, this master, Lester Levinson, he said, I don't do anything. And by the time he was, I don't know, 60s or 60s or 70s, he was a billionaire. And when they asked him what was his secret, he said, total and absolute surrender to being. Because when you, when you do that, you're given things you don't even want. In other words, you're, 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 it, they start coming to you in ways that you don't even know. Okay? But this is something that the mind cannot understand. This is something that you cannot... This is why if you're listening with your mind and trying to figure this out, you're going to be very, very confused. Because it can be figured out. But you can begin to understand when you start applying this technique we're going to be talking about in a moment, which is the secret. Because you'll begin to understand things you never understood before. Everything is one. And if you love people so much that you want them to be happy, you love seeing them happy, you love seeing them feeling good about themselves, that very love that you feel inside you already begins your abundance. You don't even realize it. Things start happening to you in ways things, people want to do things to you, people want to uh, help you. Life itself brings you things you never expected. You see? Because that is the law of life. So, so therefore, this is how you start working. This is, the, this is the, the whole secret, actually. It's very, very simple. Once we understand those two, feeling the body, feeling everything in the body, and two, is uh, the knowing the difference between wanting and having. Now, the Course in Miracles says, say to yourself, I want a piece of God and you have it. Now, isn't that wanting? This is where we don't have to understand the words themselves, but actually the, the meaning and the feeling of the words. Is the Course saying, so I want a piece of God because it's very powerful. It's a very powerful statement. I want a piece of God. Or I want freedom more than anything. I think that that is not a desire to um, possess, but more of an intuitive uh, drawing to that Beautiful. essence. That's right. So you are actually claiming it. You see? So this is where we have to understand the words, okay? When you say, I want the peace of God, it doesn't mean you don't have it. I want the peace of God. And you claim it, you see? So I want freedom. But you say it in such a way that in your body, because the body doesn't know the difference between conscious and subconscious. The subconscious believes everything you tell it, okay? It doesn't know what is real or unreal. It simply believes everything you tell it. If you, if, you tell your, if you tell your mind, completely convinced that you're going to die soon, okay? And if you make it specific, next week I'm going to die. And you begin to live in that trepidation and that fear. By next week you'll be dead. Okay, but that's, that's a fact really. Because the body will stop functioning. Because it obeys the commands that are given with the mind. So this is the power of the I am. So as long as you want security, you're telling yourself you don't want it. But if you, if you claim that security is already mine because I am, I am, you see? 
so and you begin to feel that energy as you begin to feel that energy is very subtle and um, when you start feeling it in your body things begin to happen because the power that is in the body is unbelievable now the power all comes from the mind but the body is the manifestation of the mind. See, m many people still don't know this. Now, there are many, many people who study medicine, and they study drugs, and they study uh, the name of a sickness, blah, 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 blah. But they still think the body is real. The body is a manifestation of the mind, of consciousness, appears real, but it's a mirroring. And because we believe the body is completely real, then we fear death. The first thing that happens when a person realizes their true nature, and that's common on all awakened people, okay, whoever they are, the moment a, a person awakens, the first thing that drops is the fear of death. They know they don't die. You cannot die because you don't live. You're not really living. <laughs> You see, you're up here living because it is the spirit that is talking, the spirit that is moving. It is the spirit that is, that is alive in you. It is, the body is merely reflecting that spirit. If you come from mind, then you come from limitation. So, I'm going to ask you right now, we're going to do a technique. So those of you listening to this video, I, I, in a moment, I would like you to stand up and then do the following technique. It's very simple, it will only be five minutes, but it's going to give you an idea how to convince the body. Because once you convince the body, you begin to live the I am. You see? Um, so, but we, we won't start yet. Are there any questions at all? My question is about emotion yeah. that you feel in the body. That's right. Emotion is when you make a belief so real that becomes a moving energy in the body so you can feel sweaty hands, heart palpitations, stomach cringing. You see what I mean? But for instance, the Course says you're never upset for the reason you think. That's exactly. Because of stored emotions. Stored emotions, so, yeah. So it, that's very, very good. So, so, so we not only... Not only are affecting by every thought that we think, but also what we think that thought represents because of conditioning in the past. You see, things are not uh, what they seem to be. You're never upset for the reason you think, okay? For example, if right now I say to you something not nice, okay, and you get offended. You didn't get offended because of what I said specifically, but because somehow or other you might have received it when you were young and my words represented and awakened that memory. So you're not upset for the reason you think because of what I said, and you're probably blaming me at this point because of what I said, but the truth is something in you hasn't been resolved, and so now the moment you heard me say this derogatory statement, it affected that very memory inside you, and it made it surface in the body, and it always appears in the body. Eckhart Tolle called it the pain body. Okay, when we translate everything that's in the mind into the body. Not when, <laughs> it's, it's doing all the time. Okay, the mind is always, our uh, individualized mind is constantly translating into the body. How the body is feeling moment to moment is simply a reflection of what we are feeding it moment to moment. Okay, so do you understand? Mm -hmm. Emotion is when, when something has become, when the thought is believed so strongly that now the body actually feels it. It feels it. And the first thing that the body starts feeling when it's called negative, it starts feeling heavy. Mm -hmm. You see, that's how people age. You know, there are people who even in their 70s already bent over and some of them walk heavy, okay? Why is that? Because when you have a self-image that is very heavy in you, it ages the body and the body begin, becomes heavy. Whereas when you think light thoughts, okay, when you think love, in other words, it's always about love, we're never talking about anything else. When you think about love, immediately the body feels light. 
Now, when we talk about love, people always think, again, in terms of romance, relationships, or loving someone or something. No, we're talking about the unlimited, unconditional love of being. You know, the, the gravity that, that keeps the earth from toppling over. You know, um, my goodness, the, the, the fetus that becomes a living, breathing child through, you know, pregnancy. So, in other words, that's all love. Love, the perfection. It knows what to do. It is self-regulating, self-organizing, self-recognizing process. And this is the intelligence of everything. Because it is not yours or mine, it just is. So now, when you can start feeling a feeling thank you <laughs> when you start feeling a feeling <laughs> and uh, you allow yourself to feel it totally in the body the moment you, that's called mastery what makes a master you see it's a person who has mastered his human side. That doesn't mean the human is bad. Oh no, the human is beautiful. Because the human is the appearance of the being. But when you master the human, my God, you're unlimited. So therefore, if you, if you get up in the morning in a bad mood and you're able to just switch it, just acknowledging it, feeling it, allowing it, and then just say, okay, and then you begin to feel a change happening within your body. So is that that change? I guess is just actually it's okay. giving it the 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 recognition that it's always needed. Yeah. Like the notice. It's always. It's always. Yeah. This this energy is who you are. Okay. Everything that you are feeling, first know that everything that you feel is never real. Okay, now you might say, what about love, if I'm feeling great love? Okay, love is not a feeling per se. In its initial stages, it is emotional, it can be very passionate, and it's always very beautiful, because it, love is beautiful in all its expressions. But love is. So every time you try to, to, um, to define it, every time you try to put words to it, You've already lost it. You cannot define love. You, you just, it's, it's, you can't, because everything is love. What we're talking about, don't, don't you see the perfection of this? How the mind affects the body, how the body appears so real, everybody takes it for granted, but we're all part of each other, because what I'm talking about is not just the truth about us, but by every seven billion humans on this earth applies to everyone. Now that's love, because love is not segmented, fragmented, it is whole. You see, it embodies everything and everyone. So, so let's, um, you ready to do this technique? It is so simple that your mind might play tricks with you and says, oh, that's it? But please... Visualize as strongly as you can. Okay, so if you would stand, I'm going to remain seated for the simple reason that I'm talking, and if I stand, you won't be able to see me anymore. I'd have to move all the cameras here. Okay, so standing, plant your feet shoulder width apart and plant them firmly. Good. Yeah, you heard uh, the cat here. I think he wanted to do the technique too. <laughs> Okay, so now you may close your eyes and as you close your eyes and you keep listening here, something begins to happen. Okay, you're planted firmly on the ground, feel yourself one with the ground and as you allow yourself to feel the ground and feel your body, you begin to sway a little. You might even feel it happening by itself, but it's okay, leave it, let it, let it be. That's all, that's all part of a process. But now I'd like you to visualize a feather. It is as light as a puff of smoke, and it's a few inches above your head. 
Now visualize this feather so light. Even, even a thought can move it. That's how light it is. Now see this feather descending on your head and feel it resting on your head. Good. Now keep visualizing this. This is very important. Do not let anything dissuade you from this moment. Okay, now see this feather going inside your head and it's now behind your eyes. Feel it behind your eyes. Feel as if you can actually see it there. Good, now keep seeing it down along the spine. It's going down along the spine. And now it's behind your heart. Feel it. Feel it right there. Good, and now see it descend even further and lodge itself in your base of the spine. The lower chakra. Now it's lying at the base of the spine. Now seeing it there at the base of the spine, take a very deep breath and exhale. Ah. Take another deep breath. Oh. Keep seeing it at the base of the spine. Take another deep breath. Exhale. Oh. Now just be. Just be. Now feel how much stronger you feel. Feel your body in its, in its subtle way yet. You feel stronger, more confident, more vitally alive. Now create that feeling, that sense of unlimited vitality in your body unlimited fire energy. And this is not just picturing a state now. Feel that energy moving inside you. Okay, good. Now, just open your eyes. How did you feel? At the beginning I felt the, the heaviness of the body and then it just kind of opened up as you were looking okay. at the feather. How do you feel totally? Great. Okay. Feel very good? I feel um, a little like I don't know where I am. Ah, oh, okay, okay, so we, we will sit down, please, yeah, okay, that's good, okay, see, the, you see, this is a, it's very subtle, okay, it's very subtle energy, but you are, you are actually beginning to use this power that you are in a very subtle way, and you'll find that you can practice this anytime. You can do it first thing in the morning. You can do it before going to bed. You know, <clears throat> you might find after a while you begin to sway quite a bit or you begin to feel certain things happening. But they're very, very subtle. The more real it is to you, the more powerful it becomes. But what is important, <clears throat> what is important about this technique is that when you, when you do it, Okay, you can change any feeling inside you with it. For example, let's say, 
oh, you lost all your money. Or, I don't know, the tax collector says, oh, you owe $100,000 or whatever. Something, something happens that is kind of devastating your security, okay? Your security can actually affect the body quite severely, you see? <clears throat> but what if at that moment you've practiced this technique often to the point where you're able now no, I can feel that energy that dissipated me. Can I let it go? Am I willing to let it go? Am I, am I sure that I really want to let it go? If you keep saying yes to them, when? Now. You begin to feel a change happening. And you develop that strength. For me, it felt that when I was so focused in being present in my body that there were no thoughts. So then I was not overwhelmed, but then I experienced the joy and power of just being in my body with nothing interfering. Oh, beautiful. When you said to me, you said, I feel I don't know where I end, where I begin or end, whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's actually, and I'm very happy that I didn't say it, okay? That's actually what starts to happen. You, as a limited being, begin to disappear. And it's almost like you begin to expand more and more and more, okay? That feather is a representation of the Shishumna, of the energy of the Kundalini, the energy, the tremendous power that we have in our body. So as you move it along, See, this is what you're doing. You're activating that energy. But it's so subtle because, see, the mind, it thinks so much. It wants something so tangible. Like, I want to feel it just like gripping my hand. It doesn't feel that way. The most powerful energies are very, very subtle. You see, when people are on the verge of committing suicide and they go crazy, it doesn't happen overnight. It starts in such a subtle way. Like a thought, like... Is there something wrong with me? Am I different? Is this happening to me? And then you and then you might forget about it, but the thought lingers. It starts so suddenly you don't even know it's there, but it's eating away at you and it keeps building and building and building. You see? But by doing this, you're gaining so much awareness that you're becoming aware of the subtle energies that are controlling you moment to moment. And this is the power of the I am. You see? You know. So anyway, so um, we finish off. And I hope that those of you who have seen this, please practice because it is a very powerful technique. And also saying to yourself, am I willing to let go of this feeling of limitation, of negativity? And... Um, and then in time you'll find that things in your life will begin to change in ways you never thought were possible. They just happen by themselves. Okay, and thank you. Namaste.